What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Hops Geek News, a podcast that talks about comic books, movies, TV shows. Typically, we feature a beer of the week. Today's episode, we're going to be a short one. We're just going to review Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, the finale to the trilogy of James Gunn's rendition of the Guardians. First things first, go ahead, follow us on Hops Geek News on any podcasting platform, any social media platform. And then, of course, if you want to support the show, patreon.com slash hops geek news now lauren we saw it the movie is finally out we've been watching the trailers they've been showing us like how depressing and sad this is going to be and the imdb description for this film is still reeling from the loss of gamora peter quill rallies his team to defend the universe and one of their own a mission that could mean the end of the guardians if not successful The film in its opening weekend made almost $200 million. Or actually, I lied. It made $269 million globally, which it had a budget between all the things going into it of two hundred and fifty. dollars So they cleared their budget the first weekend. This movie's a hit. Mm. Absolute hit. What were your initial reactions coming out of the theater? I absolutely loved it. I thought it was amazing. It was the most fun I've had at an MCU movie since Spider-Man No Way Home. Oh, wow. Um, I was happy they didn't kill anybody. I was expecting them to kill at least one person. Uh, like many people, I thought, oh, there goes Rocket. Oh, at first I'm like, oh, yes. I actually thought they're not going to kill Star-Lord. Adam's going to rescue him. Because I kept thinking, okay, who can rescue him? You see Groot try, he fails. You see, I don't know if Cosmo tries, but you see like some of them trying. And I was like, well, I know Adam can do it. And then when he started to go cold, I go, oh, they're going to have him go out like Yondu. And then that yeah. kind of in a poetic sort of way made sense. And that would disband the team. And then they didn't. And I was so happy. And then that end line, the legendary Star-Lord will return. I got really excited. I did too. Okay. (laughs) Yes, I did too. I'm notably not big on the Guardians for whatever reason. Like, I've been indifferent towards them. But this movie really endeared me to that group of team, people, the crew, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's This film was... I, we were expecting, obviously, somebody to die. And I guess in a roundabout way, Rocket died. He did technically flatline. That's He's dead. He came back. And there were so many moments that they built up so well in this film that was like, oh, this person's going to die. Oh, this character's going to die. They didn't. But there were real stakes in this film where you were like, there was a sequence where they're in the, the Ogle Corp. And I thought Drax. Oh my god! Was going I thought Drax is dead. Yeah, especially yeah. because Dave Batista has said he's definitely this not coming it. back. Yeah, right. So I was like, oh, he's dead. And you see Nathan Fillion over here, like shooting. Oh my him. god! I hated Nathan Fillion he for was, a second. <laughs> the, the funniest line in this movie was like, oh, he's kind of slow. It's okay. I got one of those too. And he's like, yes. I misheard what you said. He's like, shut up. <laughs> they were really mean to Drax in this movie. I gotta say, they were they really were, mean to him. like Mantis was brutal. She was like, "It's not his fault. He's stupid." He's like, you think I'm stupid? Yes, I think you're stupid. I was like, "Dang, man!" But like, then he, you know, pulled his own. He's like, "You know, oh, how do you know that? Or why didn't you tell us? You didn't ask." He was like, "Cause y'all line. kept calling him stupid." Yes, like it's it's kind of sad. Like he gets a he's very strong. He's very loving. You can tell that he cares a lot about this team, and they just treated him so poorly. And I mean, he's not the brightest crayon in the box. He's I not. Say that. But it was clever how they like, everybody's like, you're stupid, you're stupid, you're stupid. And then he communicates with the kids. And then everybody's like, wow. And they tied it back into the fact that in Guardians 1, Drax lost his family. And right. so they kind of, they finally kind of tied that back in, which I thought was really nice because you forgot a little bit that he was a dad. And when he yeah. brings that up, it's like, oh man, his well, motivation was Thanos killing yeah. his family. Right. He was designed to be a destroyer in the comics to seek right. revenge for his wife and daughter. But there was a scene in Guardians 2 that's very like heartbreaking when Mantis holds his hand and she just starts crying. And like that's yeah. just how Drax operates 24 7. That he's just, you know, even when he's, you know, eating Zarg nuts and pretending he's invisible, he's still carrying around that pain with him everywhere he goes, as anybody who lost, you know, a child would, let alone a child and a significant other. But I, I feel like we we forget that about Drax because we're so used to having him be the butt of the joke. Yeah. So it was kind of neat, neat, yeah, to get it to, to see it come full circle and to 
remind yourself that Drax is a dad, especially because, you know, every parent has two lives because every parent is going to be in some way, shape or form different when they're not around kids. So you could meet somebody a million times, never see them around their kids. And then you see them around their kids and it's different for obvious reasons. So you don't realize, oh shit, I know he was a dad, but I forgot he was, you know, he's a daddy, not a daddy like Pedro Pascal. Yeah, he is. (laughs) He's not a daddy. Um, I'm sure he is for some people. Uh, but no, it, it, I, I just loved the arcs for all of them. I felt like every single character had a nice arc and I it felt like every character was done well. Um, the high evolutionary was fantastic. God, you just wanted to punch him in the face so much. Like, I wanted to rip his face off. They finally got a villain that was just like, damn. You know, Thanos is top tier, of course, in the MCU. And then we, for a lot of their villains, they're just kind of forgettable more or less mm-hmm. like there are some rememberable ones of course but a lot of them are throwaway villains the high evolutionary was gone anywhere or going anywhere hole. well yeah. and there was comments that yondu made to rocket in the last movie where he goes i know the guy who created you so this is a guy that people do know yeah i mean and not for nothing chuck woody iwuji he played obviously he was in peacemaker but he played the high evolutionary and he was he knocked this role out of the park. He was the standout for me because in his mind, he's doing the right thing. He's creating the perfect society, but the way he's going about it, the, the animal cruelty, right? Where he's just like disposing of these animals and these beings because he's trying to create the perfect society, but they're all test subjects until rocket comes along. And he's like, I want your brain. And right. The way he's like, he why was, are you smarter than me? And it was pissing yeah. me off. He's like, I created this. How did you know how to, and he, the, the way he emotes in this film is just like, he's this mad scientist that wants perfection at all. No, you know, no matter the cost. And you see him blow up counter earth and he doesn't right. care about any of the beings on there because he's just going to scrap it and start again. It's just it was was very, so good. Like, com- like very comic booky too. Like a lot of that happened in the comic book. Yeah. And I, you know, I think overall, this is a very character driven film. Mm-hmm. And it was great because in the beginning we see Chris Pratt's Peter Quill, like he's drunk again and going through it because of the whole Gamora bit. And Nebula de facto has to take charge. She's the leader at this point <laughs> of the Guardians, regardless. And she Scary even goes to a yeah. It, apparently, I heard there that was, was like a, yeah, the thirty-five really, pound yeah. like dummy. Yeah, that James Gunn kept in his office for a while. Right. <laughs> That was, that was that amazing was, that that was a dummy. Yeah, it was really well done. Like, of course, CGI and touch ups, but like, still, that's freaking amazing. Mm-hmm. And Karen Gillan's Nebula, uh, this, she's kind of this a hole as well throughout the whole movie, and everybody calls her on her crap. And so to see her character come full circle at the end to kind of become that loving, fun, dancing character we see in the final sequence, it's like, I want to see more of her in the MCU. Like, I don't want. Just because the, this rendition of the Guardians is over, I don't want it to be done for her. Like, I feel like there's still things for her to do. Right. I feel like a lot happened during the five years that we didn't get to see because, oh, yeah. you know, I don't feel like I'm confused by her character changing the way she no, did. I, I get all. it. But I do feel like a lot happened in that time. And I, th- I believe it was confirmed, though, that uh, Rocket upgraded her arm as a thank you for he Bucky's did. arm. Yes. <laughs> That's what she, her arm was awesome. Like the way it changes and everything like that. Like, it was pretty badass. Mm-hmm. I also loved Cosmo a lot. It's played by Maria Bakalova. Like I, Cosmo, you Sean Gunn's Craglin called her a bad dog in that running. Like you called her a bad dog. Just take it back, man. You're ruining our poker game. Like that was hilarious. I love that he got more screen time too. Cause I think he's oh, yeah. a good character and I always felt bad for him. Like, was it the first? No, it was the second movie. I think um, where he's like, they killed all my friends. Yeah, and it was yeah, so yeah, yeah. sad. And like, he never wanted to be a bad guy. He just wanted to be included in something. And yeah. I don't feel like he ever was a bad guy. No, so. he was just kind of like a follower, if you will. Right. And now he gets to be in charge of nowhere for that time being in lead. And you can see right. that it meant something to him. And he really cared about the place and the people he's with. You mm. know? And, and he's been with Peter since they kidnapped oh, him since like day one. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's been around with Peter since like day one. And this, this family, if you will, was, was, really well well done and i think something that they did really great in this movie was there was a lot of heavy serious emotional moments but after those passed they did a really great job of uplifting you again of by having mm. these lighthearted 
you know, cool down periods, if you will, where there, there are those periods of comedy and things like that. Yeah. Well, and okay. So what did you think of Adam? Honestly, I thought it was, no, not at all. Okay. Like this was his introduction. He's a giant baby in the comics. People are complaining. Right. He That's doesn't how he have was in this. any concept of right or wrong in the comics when he's first. Yeah. I didn't expect them to do that. I thought we were going to immediately get all powerful Adam. And there was a point in the movie where I was like, wow, they're really not utilizing him, but the story wasn't about him. No. Well, what and they I, did, I was okay with that. Same. And I think he was a good plot device where he drove the plot because the sovereign we've met them like the, the guardians yeah. wronged the sovereign. So they're, of course they're trying to capture Their the sovereign to also save the race. Yeah. It was an arb arbulary batteries. Yeah. And you know, the high evolutionary created them. And so they're kind of like, see him as a God, a deity. And Which so is very interesting. It made a lot of sense that he would drive the plot. They were chasing the guardians and then the high evolutionary ends up killing his mom. And so he's like, why did you save me? Because the guardians save him. And he's like, whoa, mm -hmm. wait a second. I tried to kill you. And so for him, that was kind of that turning point. And he right. wasn't ever going to be a star of the movie. Like, again, this is his introduction to the MCU. So he was there as a, a, a driver, an antagonist. So yeah. I'm fine with how he was, honestly. It's interesting in the trailer, though, they did kind of make it seem like he was going to be the primary villain. And there wasn't much focus yeah. on the high evolutionary at all in the trailer. And so even when we did our Adam Warlock comic origin we sprinkled in high evolutionary because really i saw that he was going to be in yeah. there but yeah we really didn't go into it I, we, I think we hit the main point so like we like yeah i understood who he was and what he was doing and what was going on but i do think we are going to get a more evolved adam because every time adam dies in the comics he goes into his cocoon and then he comes out stronger and more wiser and everything well, that's the other thing is if you have him be the focal point in the movie this movie could be over in two seconds because he is so overpowered like having Captain Marvel at the beginning. Of right. The so you can't shoehorn him in too much because he just, there was that really cool fight sequence where the guardians do face off in nowhere against him, where he ultimately oh shoots God. rocket. And it was great. Like the, the damage he took damage, he delivered damage. And so that was a great sequence, but they did a really good job of not forcing him into the story more. Cause this wasn't a story about Adam Warlock. It wasn't a story necessarily about the high evolutionary. This was mm -hmm. Rocket's story. This was the story of, of a family that has lost so much has gained so much and how they all come to terms with that. And also like, sometimes you just have to go your separate ways. So I didn't have a problem with the way it ended being, Hey, you know, Peter Quill's like, I got to go down to earth. There's some things I got to see. Mantis was like, I've been you know relying on everybody else. I need to go do my own thing. And so everybody else kind of was like, we're not breaking well, up, but we need to yeah. take our space and like find ourselves again because we've lost ourselves. I like that Mantis called Peter out though. Cause I've always thought that like, he's got family still on earth. That's yeah. probably like called the police and have been looking for him for, you know, 30. Well, his grandpa saw him fly away years. in the spaceship. I thought. Oh, did he? I thought is he that or was a deleted scene, but yeah. Uh, one of the two, something like that where his grandpa knew. Yeah. Uh, but still, I mean, they would still be looking him for all these years and I don't know what came on the news. If, if he showed up on the news right. or how long they hung out on earth after they defeated Thanos, like we don't know any of that, but obviously he didn't go see his grandpa. So, but I, I liked that when she called him out and she's like, you know, he's, he lost his daughter and his grandson the same day. And then his memory of him yelling at him and like, that wasn't necessarily true. No. Yeah. So, I mean, he, that was his little warped, kid memory. Yeah. Warp sense for sure. So I saw the scene with the car beforehand and I was like, how the fuck does he know how to drive? He left earth when he was eight. And he then did, yeah, they no. did <laughs> get in the, that was open the fucking door. Like that was great. <laughs> the first F bomb of the MCU. Well, and yes. it wasn't Samuel L. Jackson. That's a little crazy. Surprising. Star Lord of all it people. Was, yeah. I did love how Nebula, he's like the button below. And it's just like, cause you get to that point with your kids, right? My kids are like, right. how do I do this? How do I do that? And then finally you're just like, Open the fucking door. And it was, right. it was great. Don't you like, understand. What is so you hard about this? Spaceship. You can't open an old <laughs> right. car from the eighties, but they did a good job with a few things because I know it wasn't James's James Gunn's idea to kill Gamora, but he right. obviously, you know, worked around it and well, did it yeah. well. And, and just hearing star Lord even call himself out on his own fuck up in, uh, in, yes, in about Infinity with War. The he's like, I got mad and, and then Tito. he's like, and I don't know why Gamora is here. I, I'm not a, what did he say? I'm not a, a infinity stone genius or, yeah. or professor he's like, or something. You died and then you came back to life and all of that. So it's like, I don't know. 
But she didn't. I feel like there's two Gamoras now, and it's like a branch. I would think from the TVA. Everybody kept being like, she doesn't remember, which it didn't happen to her. She didn't die. That Gamora is dead. Yeah, she didn't forget. That part kind of bothered me a bit. I will say because it's like she's not the Gamora you knew is dead, man. Right. This Gamora didn't have that last five years, and so it made sense that she joined the Ravagers at the end. I'm a hundred percent cool with that. I like that they didn't have her come around to Peter they and did all that hint at it. They did like there, there's something there. She briefly pauses and then like joins the rapper. So like that door is open. There, Although Zoe Saldana said door. that she wants to them to recast. Cause she's not going to play Gamora again, but the door is hard with all the paint. Yeah. I mean, the door is open for all of these characters to, to return in some fashion. And before I forget, I do want to talk about, I absolutely loved the hallway fight sequence that we got that oh one my shot gosh that was amazing and rocket looked like he was straight out of the cover of like the rocket raccoon comic book that was yeah that was beautifully done amazingly done like i want to try to find that on youtube just to watch that whole scene again yeah it was like for a cgi fight you know like it's a little different when you're doing something like daredevil because you can kind of do it more practical but this was a lot of like cgi fight sequences and it was so well done and one of the best hallway fight sequences that we've ever gotten in the MCU. It probably does. Yeah, it's up there with Daredevil. Yeah, yeah I mean, 100%. Yeah. And then another scene that I really loved was when he's basically like, I don't need this Peter Quill's talking to the high evolution. Like, I don't need this speech from you. And then he basically distracted him and Groot pulls all of those guns out. And just, that was so dope. <laughs> and then Kaiju yeah. Groot. We got Kaiju Groot even. Yeah, he is huge. It was crazy. That was amazing. I love that sequence too. Oh my gosh. Yeah, all of it. And, and the, you know, the MCU is doing a great job of casting all these kids because yeah, that's yeah. the future of the MCU at this point if they really want to keep it going. And and they really are. I feel like every movie and show we've had the last few years has introduced a younger character. Yeah, I mean, to- we're setting up obviously for the Young Avengers, but also like the MCU isn't going to just be over tomorrow. So we have a lot of characters who are played by older actors and actresses. Somebody's yeah. got to carry this on at some point. You know, it's just. I know life, both man. of them are my age. Like yeah, they got, yeah. they all got cast in their late twenties. And now, you know, it's just the way it goes. 14 years later. It. Yeah. Like, I, I think it was Sean messaged us on like the anniversary of Iron Man. And I'm like, how the fuck is this movie? 20, uh, yeah. 15 like, years old. 15. That's what it, I was going to say. 20. No, stupid. No, 2028. But yes, stupid. Yeah, it was. Oh man, I love this movie. It might actually. I kind of want to watch it again because it might actually be a top five MCU movie for me, which is it crazy. very well could be. Yeah, I think it's definitely in the top ten. I'd have to really reevaluate and look at everything because that's yeah. hard. Because it is. It's so there's so many movies, but this felt like kind of they closed the book officially on the Infinity Saga with this mm-hmm. one because it kind of tied some. And now it's like okay, we're ready to fully move on. So yeah, I, I would like. I loved it. I would like a Disney Plus. Um, shorts of yeah. Star Lord just telling his grandpa about his adventures, in that, f- or you know, people randomly showing up, or like even Vantage like the showing up. I'm Star Lord's of- sister. Yeah, <laughs> or give me like this iteration of the Guardian where we see Kraglin and Cosmo, and you know one of the like, little hey, girls and here? Rocket, like just hanging out, you doing their Guardians things. Absolutely, yeah. I loved it. So yeah, uh, this movie overall, great film. Go watch it out there now. Regal Cinemas, AMC Cinemas, Slow-Mo <laughs> Draft House. And you listen to this. That was a terrible. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, if you've listened to I'm this. I'm sorry. Yeah. We, we loved it here. I'm going to hopefully see it again. Lauren, any final thoughts? No. Oh, was he? Okay. The I love you guys. Do you oh, think that he was. Nope. James that I love you guys. This. We understand him now. We understand. James Gunn confirmed that we are now part of the family, that we understood what Groot was saying. Cause Carrie actually said this in the theater that she was like, I was like, wow, did he just say that? And he, she was like, no, I bet you it's because like, we understand him now. And then it comes out the next day that James Gunn confirmed that we do actually understand what Groot's saying. So that's what that was. It wasn't him. But the We are Groot was different. Right. It's, it's the fact that we understand what Groot was saying. Cause we have been accepted into the family. Oh, it's look at that. Well, well all done, family James here, done. Vin. We're all family. We're going to miss you, but we can't wait yes. to see what you do. Uh, right? Our hands are his DC universe is in good hands with James Gunn at the helm. I feel like he shows love and appreciation for the things and characters that he does. I can't wait for a Superman legacy film, which will start crypto. 
actually crypto will be in the film amazing and he's uh got the composer and things are coming up pretty well so yeah go catch the movie go let us know where this ranks for you as far as mcu films go and stay tuned for our episode coming out this coming week with vanessa marshall aka the voice of harrison doula on star wars rebels but she's also the voice of gamora in the animated guardian show she was mary jane wonder woman. in spectacular spider-man she was wonder woman she was black canary so she knows a thing or two about these make sure you check that episode out thanks for hanging out with us cheers <laughs>